Greetings, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St. Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. And this is the last in our series of worship services that have been specifically designed to be watched online. From December the 13th, we'll be resuming normal in-person worship services at St. Luke's. And you can find out the details about these by going to our website. But we will be continuing to provide access to worship from St. Luke's online. So if this is your preferred way of receiving ministry from us, don't despair. This week is the second week of Advent. Advent is far more than a time of preparation for the celebration of Christmas. The themes of the Bible readings for each of the four weeks in Advent challenges us, challenge us to live out the faith right now and to await in hope the coming of Christ. This week, we're picking up the theme of peace. Let's continue now in prayer. I invite you to share with me in this prayer. Let's pray. Holy God, we long for your peace. May we hear your call to turn toward you, to welcome you, to open ourselves to your transforming love to openly walk in your way, your way declared definitively in the person of Jesus. Forgive us when we have not listened to your gracious and life-changing word to us. Forgive us when we have gone along with the empty fashions and fads of the times. Forgive us for choosing paths that do not reflect your path of peace and hope. Assure us of the forgiveness and new life that you make possible through Christ. May we embrace that peace that passes all everyday understanding that Christ offers and which can bring healing into the depths of our souls and our beings. All praise to you, living God, triune community of love, Father, Son and Spirit. Amen. Last week, we lit the first Advent candle, the candle that reminds us of the hope we have in Christ. This week, we light a candle to remind us of the peace we find in Christ, peace that is far more than an absence of conflict. Peace in our hearts, peace with God and others, peace in our relationships, peace in the world. Christ our Lord, you are our light and you fill us with peace. As we light our Advent candles today, guide us to be peacemakers in all that we do. Help us to strive to be healers of relationships. May we see your face in the face of others. And we pray in your name. Amen. The lectionary readings for this Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent, are truly a rich fare. One passage that unfortunately, because of time, we could not include in this video is the passage that's set down from the Old Testament, from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. And I'd encourage you after this video to, to sit down and read it. You will hear echoes in this passage from Isaiah of the calling of John the Baptist, as well as uh, words of hope about the God who can make even the roughest places smooth. The two passages we have chosen to have read the, for this video are from Psalm 85 and Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. In the passage from the Gospel of Mark, we hear Mark's statement of purpose for his Gospel. It's the opening line. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we also hear from this passage in Mark's Gospel about this wild character who appeared in, in the wilderness, preparing the way for Jesus. Yes, of course, John the Baptist. Psalm 85 
contains remarkably evocative language, which links to our theme of peace. And as you listen to this passage, remember that the Hebrew word for peace is that wonderful word, shalom. Good morning. The Bible reading today is from Psalm 85, verses 8 to 13, and today I'm reading from the New International Version. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. The Gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 1 verses 1 to 8 and I'm reading from the um, New Revised Standard Version this time. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people from Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate only locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie even the thong of his sandal. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever found yourself struggling to find peace in your life? I can remember when Jenny and I lived in an apartment in Melbourne, and it was always the occasions where Jenny had an early shift that someone would make an awful lot of noise that would keep us awake. On a particularly memorable occasion, Jenny and I were awoken to hear a woman screaming into the intercom to her friend or partner upstairs to let her in, let her in. And Jenny and I were almost responding to this by saying, yes, let her in, let her in, give us some peace. But at a more profound level, the search for peace can be about a search for good relationships. During lock lockdown, Jenny and I watched the film Rams, and I'm talking about the, Ice, the original Icelandic version of the film, and of course there's just recently been released a, an Australian version, which is all about two brothers. And a key element of the film's plot is about the mending of the terribly damaged relationship between these brothers. Apparently they hadn't spoken to each other for years, we learn at the beginning of the film. By the way, the mending of the relationship comes at a great cost, but I won't spoil the film by telling you what takes place. Then there is this genuine struggle of peace between nations and communities. I've often wondered, as someone who has not experienced warfare at close quarters, what it must be like for someone or a family to take shelter each night to avoid the next bombing raid. To, to, to shelter, wondering when will this end? Who will be the next to be injured? Who will be the next to be killed? When will there be peace? And then of course there is the struggle for genuine inner peace. 
How many stories and films are about people trying to find peace in their hearts? I vividly remember a sermon on peace given by one of my lecturers when I was at Theological College. And in the sermon, he recounted another occasion when he was preaching about peace. But internally, he was feeling anything but peaceful. And he told us how by preaching the sermon on peace, comfort and peace came upon him. And, and the turmoil inside him subsided. And what about peace with God? Again, so many stories could be recounted and are recounted about people finding peace with God. The section of the psalm that we uh, heard read, Psalm 85, has that evocative statement that when God's glory, God's way exists in the land, righteousness and peace kiss each other. God's desire is that on this earth, people might live in right relationship with God and with each other. And right relationships bring about genuine peace, genuine shalom, both inwardly and outwardly. Friends, God offers us peace in our hearts and souls. And this has been done for us at great cost through Christ. Through the cross of Christ, God deals with the brokenness within us, assures us of sins forgiven, and makes clear how valued each one of us is to God. And God calls us through Christ to the path of peace in our relationships with others. This, by the way, does not mean to say that uh, we should be walked over by others, that we should be doormats, but it does mean seeking to bring a spirit of concord in our relationships with others and within communities of which we are a part. Listen again to the words of the psalm, at least a portion of them. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises to bring peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those, to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet to, together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other.
I invite you to share with me in a prayer that has been written for Advent. It's a prayer for peace. It comes from the Christian Aid website. It was originally written for a situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Let's pray. Emmanuel, God with us. Humanity awaits in darkness, longing for your light. In the centre of darkness, rekindle our hope. As we wait for peace in the midst of war, be with us. As we pray for families to be reunited, be with us. As we pray for enemies to be reconciled, be with us. As we pray for lands to be restored, be with us. As we pray for long-term security, be with us. As we pray for kindness and community, be with us. Restore and set right our relationships. Replace the darkness in our hearts with your light and joy. Let your word set alight the hope the world needs to bring to life your love and justice. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Remember, Jesus said to his disciples and says to us, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. Peace must come. Way out in space, this earth is our place, a pinpoint of light whose dwellers still fight. The survivors shake hands, then make weapons and plans to do battle all over. Sunday, blessed are the meek for the peace that they seek over.